if you're gonna be building a new home or renovating an existing one and you wanna do it more sustainably, that doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. It just means that you have to make better, more conscious choices. And a great way to start doing that is with the materials that you choose. We're gonna talk about 30 plus green building materials that you could use for your home right now. Hello everyone, Larissa here, and this video comes to you via Up Houses and Trees, where I blog about sustainable design, sustainable living, sustainable everything. You can also get my help with creating a sustainable home of your own. Quite often I talk about the things that you bring into your home, like your furniture and your decor and your artwork, but I wanted to talk about the actual building aspect of the home. So whether that's a new home or if you're going to be renovating and doing things like changing insulation, doing new siding, new roofing, more so the like bones and finishes of a home. How can we make those things be more environmentally conscious? So a building structure is where it all begins. Of course, if we're talking about renovating an existing structure and you're only gonna be doing more of like the interior finishes, this might not apply to you. So some of these techniques are actually thousands of years old and they are being used again more recently and some of them are newer techniques. So the first that I wanted to talk about is rammed earth. So in a rammed earth home, uh, raw materials like chalk, lime, earth, sometimes gravel, they are compressed, aka rammed, to create um, foundations and walls. Because when these homes are created, they use uh, whatever is available locally, they have very small environmental footprints. Another old building technique that is coming into popularity again is straw bale construction. This was actually, according to the research that I did, first done by settlers in Nebraska. The cool thing about a straw bale home is that it has a really high R value, which basically is the insulation value. So nice, thick, straw filled walls equal a very nice, warm, home in the winter and a cooler home in the summer. And another cool older building technique is a cob home. Cob is like a dome kind of like structure that is made out of things such as clay, water, straw, sometimes sand. Cob is so structurally strong that actually cob homes that were built hundreds of years ago are still standing today. You also of course can build your structure of your home using concrete. Concrete isn't necessarily considered to be the most sustainable material but it also depends on a lot of different factors. For example, when we build our home, we use um, insulated concrete forms for our basement because they have very high R value. We used ICF because that was what was available to us at the time. Once again, it's not about being perfect, it's just about being a little bit better, but even better options than traditional concrete would be something like ashcrete or timbercrete. Ashcrete is made out of recycled materials such as fly ash and timbercrete is made out of recycled Timber. And another structural building material, again, not always considered to be super sustainable, but steel is basically infinitely recyclable. Old steel could be remade into new steel and so on and so forth, whereas things that are made out of like plastic based materials are, they only have a certain life cycle and then they end up in a landfill. And of course, we can't forget about wood. Something that's coming more popular lately is mass timber construction because mass timber, it basically like glues and nails together multiple layers of wood. A lot of that wood that would have been wasted in like a traditional um, mill sort of setting actually gets used and then there is less waste. Insulation, super important for a sustainable home, especially when you live in a cold climate like I do. There are tons of options, including some like newer, kind of weird options such as mycelium, which essentially are mushroom roots. So once dried, these mycelium roots become like a very strong fiber that actually is fire resistant and resistant to mold. And because it's completely natural, it is also biodegradable, which the other types of insulation are not. There's also soybean foam uh, as an insulation option made of course from soy. There is sheep's wool, which if you're vegan, you might not want to go that route. An alternative to sheep's wool, if that's not something that you can really get behind or you can't um, fine. Uh, there's also recycled denim insulation. So that basically is, yeah, denim from fabric uh, mills or from clothing that has been recycled can be turned into denim insulation. And it's this really pretty blue color, which I know you won't see because it it's in your walls, but that's kind of cool. There also is cellulose insulation, which basically is shredded paper. And that is not a newer uh, technique. That is an older technique that has come back into uh, popularity. So now you've got your home built, you've got your insulation in, 
and you're going to be putting on your roofing and your siding, which this is somewhere where if you have an existing home and you're renovating and want more conscious materials on the exterior of your home, that's where this section of the video can come in handy. So it actually wasn't until like the mid 20th century that roofing materials made out of synthetic products became popular. Before that, it was more so using what you had locally. So wood, clay, stone, those types of things were all very popular and they are coming back into popularity again. So you can have clay tiles, uh, stone tiles as roofing. You could have clay brick for siding and also stones for siding. Yes, those avenues are normally very pricey up front, but when you consider how long they last compared to something like asphalt roofing or like a vinyl siding, if you use something that is natural, albeit more expensive, like clay or stone, it's gonna last you know, decades upon decades longer. Although when it comes to vinyl siding, there are um, companies that are trying to create better vinyl products so that they are made out of recycled materials. And as I had mentioned before, when I was talking about steel as a, you know, structural component, you also could have a steel roof, which that is what we have on our house. We were pretty dedicated to getting a steel roof as opposed to, again, what is the default here, which is an asphalt roof because asphalt roofs, they last about like 10 to 20 years, whereas a steel roof can last 50, 60, 70 years. It's not always the components of the material. I mean, that's also important, but you also have to take into account the longevity of the material because of course, the less that something needs to be replaced, the less chance there is of it ending up in the landfill. Siding that is made out of FSC certified wood, so that would be a form of stewardship council. And so therefore you know that your wood products are coming from somewhere where the forest is not being decimated in order to create products for your home. You could do all of those things that I've already talked about with your home, but if your windows and your doors are not um, well insulated and doing a good job of keeping the temperature of your home regulated, then obviously a lot of the other stuff isn't gonna be as um, effective. Installing Energy Star rated doors and windows in a home that previously did not have those types of doors and windows can actually reduce a home's carbon footprint by 12%. Something cool that has been coming out more in recent years is smart glass. Smart glass are windows that actually transition to have a darkening effect on them so that if the sun is really hot and shining on it, they will darken to uh, keep your home darker and therefore more cool. You also can potentially find um, secondhand windows and doors for your home, but of course you're not gonna wanna put something in that is not energy efficient because that kind of defeats the purpose of all of this other stuff we were previously doing to create an energy efficient and thus sustainable home. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is alternative energy sources. So these are not necessarily a uh, building material, but it definitely goes hand in hand with creating a more eco-conscious home. Things such as solar, wind, biofuel, geothermal, hydro. We have solar panels on our home. That's the one alternative energy source that I could speak to personally. Just like with the steel roof that I talked about earlier, the solar panels were a very high priority for us. And we actually cut areas of the home that made the home too expensive in order to afford the roof and the solar panels. Basically that's the way that the energy sector is headed anyway, more towards the green energy solutions. So I am really happy that we got on board with that, you know, four or five years ago now. If you're really interested in getting more of the like high tech alternative energy sources, Tesla have like solar tiles now. Uh, and so from the street, they basically look, it looks like a regular roof. <gasps> That was a lot. I actually skipped a few, but if you want to read all about the things that I've talked about, plus a few extra things and learn things more in detail, you can head on over to Houses and Trees. I have a full blog post all about this. If you need help deciding what sorts of materials you want to use for your home, or you just have questions about them, you can also book a free consultation with me. Subscribe and like if you liked it. I hope you did. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye! Since The Last of Us came out, I used to love mushrooms and now I'm like, ooh, so random, so random. Oh. Am I even recording right now? This is gonna be doing too long. So what do I need to say to wrap this shit?